got a question from Reddit. So recently I did a Reddit AMA where I got asked hundreds of questions and there was a really good one on leg locks that I wanted to share with you guys that I thought make, would make a good video. So we got a question from a guy who's been training for about three years, I think he's a blue belt, and he says that you know for you know a long time he's played with straight ankle locks and knee bars, things like that, no big deal. But he said recently during a class, his coach took all the white belts and then separated all the colored belts and then he went over to the colored belts and he says, hey guys, I'm gonna show you how to do this heel hook. So he shows him how to do this heel hook. And you know, our friend here says that once they put the heel hook in there and he felt the, the knee and his ankle and his leg, everything tighten up and he could feel the, 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 the leg destroying capabilities that the, the, the heel hook has. He says afterwards he's been spooked because he says he wants to compete because he likes to compete. But he knows that as he becomes a higher and higher level competitor, leg locks become more and more common and the, the heel hooks and things like that open up to the competitors that he rolls against. And he's like, man, I'm afraid of getting caught in a leg lock and then some guy just ripping my knee apart and then me being permanently injured. He says that he's not really so worried about like arm bars and shoulder locks and chokes, you know, because he feels like they're not as bad, but he feels like the, the leg lock, that's a bad thing because it can permanently injure you. He's wondering if I've ever had this, you know, super deep fear of leg locks or if I know anybody that's ever had them and how they dealt with it. So brother, thank you for the question. And it's interesting. The reason I picked this video was because again, I have some personal experience to, to go with, but I was afraid of leg locks for a long time because the leg lock, the heel hook in particular, was the very first submission that like, I felt injury from, that I got pain from, and it freaked me. Amelabs. <laughs> I love how quick I am with that thing. Amelabs. It wasn't even ambulance, it was, a, it was like a fire rescue thing. So anyway, so the heel hook was the first leg lock that I ever had a injury from. So back in the day, me and some wrestling buddies, we would get downstairs in my basement and we would kind of, you know, grapple with each other. We would like use wrestling that we had and we would like pick little bits and pieces of stuff that we saw on videos online. YouTube wasn't around, so it would be like on the back end of forums and highlight videos that people had put together of grappling, and we would try to figure out what they were doing. Well, one day I was wrestling around with my buddy. We, were, we, were, we had a little match going. And I was playing some sort of guard. I don't, <laughs> my guard was terrible, but my legs were locked around his waist. We'll just leave it at that. So my legs are locked around his waist. He breaks my guard open, sits back, catches me in a heel hook. <laughs> now, I don't know what's going on, so I'm looking at my leg, and he's got my heel caught, and I'm like, huh? <laughs> pop, 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 pop. Cracks my ankle. My ankle's all kinds of messed up for like three weeks. Didn't get to my knee, luckily. So, but he pops my ankle, and you know, again, freaked me out. And that planted a seed in my head. I didn't realize that at the time. I do looking back at it now. But that planted a seed in my head where I was unconsciously afraid of leg locks from that point on to ever. Because basically, when everybody, when someone would grab any sort of leg lock for several years afterwards, I would just freeze like a deer in headlights. Because again, it injured me that first time rolling. I didn't know what was going on. And you know, at the time when I started getting into jiu-jitsu, about a year later at this point, it's 2003, and again, from 2003 on for several years, leg locks weren't really a good thing in jiu-jitsu. It was kind of a taboo thing. You know, it, the way that we used to get it back in the day was if you were a leg locker, it was like, what, you couldn't pass their guard? Why are you leg locking? You know, if you're leg locking, you're weak. You got weak jiu-jitsu, so you gotta do leg locks. Or, you know, you might throw them out as a Hail Mary. Now later on, obviously, jiu-jitsu um, started integrating leg locks into them. Leg locks became a prevalent thing. Um, and one of the things that we instituted at my gym years ago was Foot Locker Fridays. So on Fridays, almost every Friday, we do leg locks. And this is a chance for us to kind of bring all that stuff together and, and try everything out. And it became a chance for me, one, to educate my students because I saw my students trying to piece together leg locks um, from that they saw on YouTube. And they, there, was a, there were some injuries I'll talk about in a second. And then also, I knew that me and Chad both as higher level competitors need to have more leg locks in our game so we do them every every Friday and what I found was that for me personally as someone with a deep-seated fear of leg locks as I got more educated in the positions I wasn't afraid of them because as I understood how they work how to how to finish them properly and then I understood how the defensive uh, deep defensive <laughs> defenses defensive uh, techniques work I had a good well-rounded view of how both sides work of it and then I knew what was going on. There was no unknown part of it, right? Like with you right now, you're afraid of leg locks because you've only felt the heel hook one time and now you're, it's unknown to you still relatively so your mind's able to wander and be like, what if, what if, what if, what if? But once you start to get deep into them and you understand how everything works, you, you, you understand when you're caught. Like here's just a great sort of uh, analogy or parallel. If you get caught in an arm bar, do you wait for your arm to pop? Or do you tap before it, it get, uh, once it gets tight, right? We tap early. If someone puts you in a, sh a kimura and their shoulder's all jacked up, do you wait for your shoulder to rip and pop? 
No, you tap as soon as you're caught. What happens is as you get a good knowledge of leg locks and as you understand both how to apply them with control and as you understand how to defend them properly, really too, there's another. This time it's an ambulance, it's not the little fire truck. All right. As you understand both how to like you know apply them safely and with control, and as you understand how to escape them properly, then you know when you're caught. And it's the same thing. You know when you're caught in an armbar. You know when you're caught in a hook. I mean, if you gave a guy who didn't know, like for instance, I've seen people injure themselves trying to get out of an armbar because they don't know when they're caught. I've seen people try to injure themselves, you know, when they were caught in a shoulder lock, um, you know, because they didn't, they didn't know they're caught. And I've seen people with leg locks, and this is one of the reasons why we started doing Foot Locker Fridays. One of, my, one of our white belts got caught in a straight ankle lock. Didn't know how to get out of it. So one part of it, he's got a straight ankle. So one part of his leg is like locked tight. The other part still has movement. Here's his knee. He tries to twist out of it and pop. His knee just all kinds of nasty. And that's when I realized I was being a negligent coach by not diving in there with the students and showing them more about him. So we started doing leg locks. Now people, I show white belts, blue belts, doesn't matter. Everybody gets an education on leg locks. There are some restrictions on, the, like brand new white belts can't use heel hooks, but um, as they get to the tail end of their white belt as four stripes, then they can begin to use them because they've had some time under their belt to apply them safely. And I know that they're training them in my gym. So moving on, here would be my little bit of advice coming from a guy who used to be afraid of leg locks. First thing is go learn more about them. Like talk to your coach and say, coach, that heel hook you put me in, man, I need, I need to know more of that stuff. I need you to show me more. Would you please show us more? Again, talk to your coach. If there's something you guys wanna learn, talk to that guy or woman, right? Learn from them and get them in to show you some stuff. So the first thing I would say is go talk to your coach and ask them to give you some more knowledge about these, these heel hooks and these leg locks. This way you can become more educated. The second thing I would say is that one of the things that really helped me out was with Chad um, and some of my higher level belts, we would do a lot of catch and release. So basically, when we would get to the submission, we would catch it and once we, there was like, it was tight and there was no movement, we would tap. Once we tapped, we would loosen up a little bit on the lock and allow the person to move around and try to defend it and escape, and then we would transition from move to move. And that catch and release allowed me a lot of time in position, and all of us, a lot of time in position to sort of figure this stuff out under like, not dire circumstances, you know, so it, we're not worried about the other person ripping our heel off. We're, we're allowed to play a little bit and think about what's going on and sort of play with the positions because the longer you're in the positions, the more time you have to just kind of tinker with what's going on, the more relaxed you become. And that'll allow you, again, to be able to figure out what's going on and get some good experience from the position, just like it would be from any other position. It's, it's no different than even like takedowns. There's a lot of people that send me messages that they're afraid of takedowns. And it's not because of the takedown itself, it's because their lack of knowledge with the takedowns. They're afraid of being, you know, being picked up and slammed and landing wrong. But if you understand how to fall properly, you understand how to defend properly, and you understand how takedowns work, you'll be fine. Now the other sort of side to this is if you go to a competition, me for instance, I'm, I, I play with leg locks, I like leg locks, I'm not the best leg locker. And when I go to competitions, I typically don't engage them that much. I know how to defend them and I know how to use them, but it just not, it's not a part of my A game. And for you, if you go into competitions and you find that you're just not the best leg locker, then what you can then do is you can use your knowledge of how the leg locks work to defend them. It's on, it's, it parallels perfectly with when I started learning how to play full guard. As I learned how to play full guard, my guard passing ability got better because I was able to stay out of submissions. Because I knew what the person down there was doing. And it's the same thing with your leg locks. As you understand how leg locks work, how the positions work, how to attack with them, how to defend with them, all that stuff, you'll understand the mechanics better, at least this is what I found. And as I sort of understood how the positions work, I could stay out of them better. And I think that you'll probably find the same thing. As you understand how all these leg locks work and you have a good deep knowledge of them, you'll understand how to stay out of them. So even if you don't want to engage, even if you don't want to put your leg in harm's way in a competition where you know adrenaline's pumping and you know they might possibly pop it, you're able to stay away from it. And I guess one, one little last thing to throw in there, I know this video is getting a little long, the worst injuries that I've seen personally as a coach have come from freak accidents where people get taken down, maybe they post, maybe they land wrong on their neck or something like that. Freak accidents that just you just couldn't plan for. Or lack of education and people sort of, you know, zig when they should have zagged. Like I was talking about my student who popped his knee and I've seen people like jack their, their shoulders up and things like that because they don't understand how to defend the positions properly. So I think that education typically is a great way to lessen the amount of injuries that you're gonna sustain. So learn the position, get comfortable with it, move towards that fear, and then sort of own it. And I think that you'll probably be very happy with the results that you get from this. So brother, thank you so much for the question. And guys, I appreciate all your questions. And I'll talk to you guys next time. <laughs>